Hello and uh, welcome back. Yes, I found one after many years. I've been looking for one and it is the ICOM IC751. And it's an HF transceiver from 0 to 30 megahertz. And on FM it can do about 100 watts. And on AM SSB around 40. And uh, well, they are not that hard to find. Only I didn't want to pay too much because on eBay the prices are crazy, some are even around 600 and I'm not willing to pay that. And uh, there are two models, you have the 751A and the 751, and this is the standard 751. I think the 751A has some improvements on the, on the RF board, from the IF even, and I think the FM is there all integrated on the control board. Well, here it's still a separate board. Uh, both of the models have those uh, RAM board problems that when your battery dies, then the, yeah, then you lose all your memory and I think it doesn't even start then. So just like I think the same is with the 271 and the 471, that's why I wanted this one. I have those, I can show you. They all have this, this RAM board that uh, just goes empty when the battery finishes. So I think this one is from 83 and the 751 came around 86, I think. And uh, I was promised by the seller that it is fully working. Also, um, he sent it last year to repair for the for the memory boards. How the battery should be full also, so I don't expect any problems there. And I did a full checkup and it was working. And uh, I was really doubting for the 751 or the 751A. And uh, but the but the A version was just I I didn't want to uh, pay that. But the nice thing from the from the A version is that it comes standard with uh, CW filters. And then I think one of the SSB filters also is by default, well, it is here an option. And you can have an internal power supply also in the A version. This one is not, it's just powered by 12 volts, you need your own power supply. And, uh, and I think on AM it does uh, 50 watts, this only 40. But on, uh, on the FM and the other, it is 100, so that's kind of cool. And it is in pretty good uh, condition. Look at that, if we have a closer look. And I like this big knob, and it just, look at that, it just goes, goes, goes. And that is so easy to tune. If you want to do bigger steps, you put the band, and you just... This, if you want to do fine, look at this. It is so easy. It's so easy to operate. Really cool. It has also FM built in. That was by uh, default in uh, in these transceivers. Yeah, and it is a piece of quality. I think in that time, the, when it came in '83, I think it was around fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars or euros. So it was quite an amount. And later, when the 751A came in '86, it was still around 15, 16. So uh, that you can buy these now from 300 and up, that is really amazing, especially when you know it is good. Yeah, and you pay that money at that time just because it is a very good product, because it has a triple conversion on FM and even quadruple on. Uh, AM, SSP, CW, RTTY. So they knew what they were doing in that time. Well, I like to see what is the performance. I will do only FM performance because I've heard the Marconi. I think it can only also do AM. But I just want to play a little bit to let's see. I did hear a noise, so um, I should not have switched it on yet. I remember when it came. And I shake, just like the microphone also, but I'm not too worried about that. But I like to see what actually is making that noise. So before I start transmitting and everything, let's, uh, let's have a look on the inside. So let's have a look inside. The Marconi is heating up. 
it is connected to external reference, but it still feels better just to have it switched on at least for half an hour. So we can have a look on the inside. Look at that, just some old classical electronics. So if you need to work on this, you actually can. Instead of it being one big processor, you actually have some components. So a better look from the top. Maybe a little bit more. Here is still space for an optional filter. Here is still space for another one. This is a CW filter, which probably is then already the default in the 751A. And here is also, I think then it's the FL32 that is able to put in here. This is a separate board. So maybe this is that FM board I talk about that it was separated and in the 751A it is all integrated in one. Okay, let's have a look at the other side. Here look from the bottom and uh, well we could see this one was falling so it was no problem it ended up in the in the bottom so it was no problem switching it on i hope it didn't damage too much bouncing around during the shipping but uh, just let's hope not we just put this back but it is stuck so that is good i see here still some option available for something and there we have that ROM board I'm not sure if this is already a modification maybe it is because I thought it had two little chips in the battery so that would be nice if this one has already been modified where is that RAM board? I also found already software to program this uh, chip yourself so if the battery completely dies and it doesn't want to start again well, of course, you need just need to be aware of this battery and just replace it before before it dies. But if you are too late, um, there is some fellow him who I will link to that who designed the programmer and he dumped his uh, EEPROM or his ROM, so you can program it yourself through the printer port. So you probably need an old DOS machine for that. I haven't looked into that. Here in the back big heat sink to cool down this uh, 100 watts uh, we have here the power connector and here you can see is also a space for this internal power supply but uh, I'm using only the external here this is accessory connection I think this is for let's say uh, an automatic container tuner I think the AT100 and the AT500 is compatible but I also saw a fellow hem having a, a special uh, converter adapter for this one that you can also use it on the AT150 and then just need to go from this round plug to this square one and then it also is compatible let's have a look if you can see this big transistor in the back just curious maybe we can't see a thing but it's also my first time with this one Hopefully I'm not doing something I cannot put back. Whoa. So let's zoom in on that. Okay. Well, these are... It's a C1971. It's probably driving because I don't think if we get 5 watts out of this one, it should be about it. These are not that familiar. This is probably power. Also, it's also a C. Usually, these are HF stuff. Don't see that one. Uh, the, it is probably below here. This looks like some sort of temperature control on top. So, it's probably below this one here. And here is another one. Let's see if we can put that back together. 
again let's see close in I, I decided not to remove those screws from the temperature I like this closest it seems to be very nice this is some quality you know real aluminium real metal normal screws just properly built that's why it still works after so many years so I'm just using my uh, fold craft here it can do 15 volts 40 amps so that should be enough but uh, if it gives too much uh, distortion I will get my uh, I think it's diamond or uh, radio com if it is a real problem I can also use uh, this power supply 50 amps and this is more made for uh, radio and you can have some sort of a noise offset if it uh, gets some distortion but uh, I try first with the other one because that's already on my bench so the Makoni switched on for a while let's switch on this one uh, squirrels power first a little bit down okay so well let's put it let's start at 1 megahertz 1.5 1.5 megahertz it's all connected let's do a transmitted test power is low well I started at 1.5 megahertz and somehow that is not uh, working so maybe it's too too low or my Makoni doesn't start there I'm not sure it's putting a little bit of power so I go a little bit up let's go to 2 megahertz yes and now it works and uh, oof, it is really spot on I think you can see both displays now and this one is in 2 megahertz right here and if we have a look here at the Makoni which is running on GPSDO 2.00006 so nothing wrong with that frequency and it's now on the lowest power that is a 6 uh, no it's 10 watts and what if I turn up the power how high can we go we can go up to 110 watts I can't do this too long because my Makoni can only do 75 uh, but I can do for 30 seconds a little bit more oh, what about receiving oh, let's see RX is TX yes we have modulation let's do a little bit of level I prefer micro faults just below a micro fault well that also is a preamp so now it's now I have the preamp and now 0 0.4 0 point. I don't think that is very bad in, for this old machine and there is also a attenuator we need a lot more yeah so that also works let's see I have now on 11 megahertz what uh, does it do there transmitting on the lowest it is 10 transmitting on the highest is 120 okay receiving again Oh, I'm a little bit I moved so. frequency again spot on this is nothing nothing wrong there uh, this also preamp uh, 
the preamp really works well. 0 0.4, 3, 4. Nice. Well, I have an end fit here, a little one, but the wires are just on my ceiling. You can see a little bit there. I have also on the other side, the rest of the wires are here. Well, this is absolutely not the best way. So I'm picking up a lot of solar uh, panels. Okay, I just put now my uh, end fit wire. I'm not picking up a lot of noise, actually. I can try later with my active whip and I know it's a lot better, but first let me try to find a, a station and uh, I come back. Well, I really have a problem getting some signal, so now I'm just in a very low 1054, some commercial radio, but uh, the wire is not picking up uh, too much. So I still have these uh, active whip antennas. I think they were around 30, 30 euro, 30 dollars. And because it just picks from the air, I probably don't get so much distortions that I get from my uh, from my wire. And I don't want to transmit right now, so I can use that. So let me put this together little amplifier power just connect it and that's it very easy you don't need too much space everything is there perfect and I just been playing a little bit I did find some stations some stations and the uh, NASA is on the wire they both get uh, get the stations it just sounds Now that was my lazy Sunday. I will continue uh, cleaning a little bit. By the way, the, the NASA is also not, uh, not bad at all. And you can find them uh, pretty cheap. So if you just want to listen to uh, HF, have a look at these, uh, these NASA or target uh, receivers. And they're called the HF3 or HF4. Both are, are pretty good. So then you are below 100. I would say around 80 you can find them. And then with this active whip, you have a starter kit for, for very cheap just to, to listen on the HF. So, thank you for watching and uh, hope to see you next time.